Okay, so the last thing we're going to do this week is since we've looked at air, what arithmetic and geometric sequences are, we're going to kind of compare the two. So the first question says the founder of a popular social media website is trying to inspire gifted algebra students to study computer programming. He is offering two different incentive programs for students. So the first option, the option is students will earn one penny for completing their first math, science, or computer related college course, and the amount earned will double for each additional course they complete. This should sound a little bit familiar from last week or two weeks ago. And then option two, students will earn one penny for completing their first math, science, or computer related college course. For each subsequent course they complete, they will earn a hundred more dollars than they did in the previous course. So we want to write an explicit formula for each problem. So let's look at the first option. So option number one, option number one is geometric because we're multiplying by some number each time. So for any number of courses, we're going to take our first amount, which is a penny, and we're doubling each time. So we have times two, and that would be to the n minus one power. Then if we're talking about option number two, that would be arithmetic because we're increasing by $100 for each course. So a sub n would be one penny plus my $100 times my n minus one. So the previous course times 100. So let's actually look at the difference between these two as far as a table and a graph. So you can see option number one, the table, increases only by pennies but once we get to i think it happens at the 19th course we are now ahead of all of the courses for our option number two so it is multiplying by the same number each time and you can see that that exponential growth model for my graph and option number two um, is a linear pattern so if we were to choose option number one I would make more money when I hit the 19th course. Um, option number two, or and for option number two, I would still have more money until that time. So I guess you would, choosing those two scholarships would depend on how many courses you plan on taking. Um, obviously, I would want to take more courses because I could end up with option number one is $167,000 and I would love to have that. Um, so let's look at some details of these two problems. So option one we said was geometric. Each term is being multiplied by two from the previous term. It is also geometric because it follows an exponential pattern. So the domain of this function. So remember domain is our input. So if we're talking about input, our input is the number of courses. We would only be able to take whole number of courses. You can't take negative five courses. You can't take 1.2 courses. So the domain of this function is what we call our natural numbers. Natural numbers are accounting numbers, which would be like one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, I didn't include zero here because zero would be obviously the, um, if I took no courses, I wouldn't make any money. And as we said, option two is arithmetic. It is because it is a previous term in 100, a sum, and it follows a linear pattern. And obviously, we're still talking about college courses. The domain would still be natural numbers because you can only take those whole number courses. Um, so what can be said about the domain of arithmetic and geometric sequences? It always needs to, needs to be some sort of integer. In this case, we can't use negative numbers because it doesn't make sense um, as far as the situation goes if we're talking about specific college courses. But overall, when we're talking about sequences, our input is always going to be some sort of integer. All right, so let's ask, answer a couple questions about this. So consider the two scholarship options for studying computer science. Which scholarship option is better if you're only taking 10 courses? So if we look back at our table, at 10 courses, you're either gonna make $900 or $5. I would definitely wanna choose the $900. So we're gonna select option two for that one, the linear option, the arithmetic option. But what if your degree required 25 courses? So if we go back to 25, obviously, that exponential or geometric option would be better. So option one. 
do you think these graphs represent discrete or continuous functions? So let's go back to talk about our domain. Um, discrete means only specific inputs are allowed. Continuous means I can input any number that I want. And so this would be discrete. And the reason why is you cannot take a fraction or a decimal amount of course numbers. You can only take whole courses. So the reason why it's discrete is you can only take, only take whole numbered courses. Your output obviously could be a decimal because we're dealing with money, but your input is the reason why it's discrete. Um, do you think option one would ever be offered as a scholarship? Um, probably not, <laughs> because I would assume um, that, probably not. Um, I would assume anyone that would attend this school would take that option and they would be giving out a lot of money um, if people chose to do that. So let's look at a different situation. So Pablo and Lily are saving money for their senior trip next month. Pablo's goal is to save one penny on the first day of the month and to triple the amount he saves each day for one month. Lily's goal is to save $10 on the first day of the month and increase the amount she saves by $5 each day. So Pablo's savings plan is geometric because he is or tripling his amount, multiplying by three. Lily's plan is going to be arithmetic because she's increasing by a consistent amount each time. Which person do you think would be able to meet her goal? I would definitely say Lily. Um, and the reason why is Pablo's goal is going to end up being somewhere around $20 million or so, probably more than that. I know when you double a penny, it ends up being $10 million. So it probably is going to be more. And I would assume that if he's trying to save money, he doesn't have that much money to save. So I would definitely think Lily would be more rational to be able to save her goal save for that month for her goal. Um, circle the best answers to complete the following statement. So arithmetic sequences follow a linear pattern, whereas geometric sequences follow an exponential pattern. And the domain of both sequences is always going to be integers. Remember, we're always going to input some sort of whole number, positive or negative. The previous problem with the two options just happened to be those natural numbers. All right, on Sunday, Chris and Caroline will begin their final preparation for a piano recital the following Saturday. Um, Caroline plans to practice 30 minutes on the Sunday prior to the recital and increase her practice time by 30 minutes every day leading up to the recital. Chris plans to practice half of Caroline's time on Sunday, but will double his practice time every day leading up to the recital. So we're gonna say here's the day for each of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So remember, Caroline is practicing 30 minutes and then 60 minutes, then 90 minutes, 120, 150, and then 180. And then Chris is starting with half of her time, so 15 minutes. And then it says he's going to double. So times two would be 30, then 60, then 120, then 240 and then 480. So that would be their times that they would be practicing each of them. All right, so now that we know that their practice times is, let's look at it on a graph. So you'll see that Caroline's practice times form that linear graph because hers is increasing by the same amount each time. And then Chris is doubling his, so her, his ends up being geometric. So Caroline's is linear. And Chris's is this geometric or exponential. So although Chris is starting with less time, eventually he's going to be practicing more because the amount of practice time is increasing for him each day. All right. Again, let me know if you all have questions on reminder email, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.